right guys, welcome back to the channel. We're here with Jamie again. And if you haven't seen his Sprinter Tour, check that out. This one, he restores VWs and makes them look so beautiful. Like, as if you're driving it off the lot for the oh, first time. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> so he's gonna let us see what he's done. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so this has been a labor of love for me. It's kind of a, I guess, a pastime, and I've always enjoyed working with my hands, and I love VWs. I had my first one when I was, I think I was like 21, and I just realized there's so much you can do with your time if somebody else is driving you around the country. So kind of got that stuck in my blood, and I just haven't turned back since. So this is Floyd. This is a 71 Sportsmobile. Um, Volkswagen and what it was was a cargo van originally and then Sportsmobile bought these as commercial vehicles and they would go ahead and turn them into campers. Um, the nice thing about a 71 is it's the last year with disc brakes as well as the Type 1 upright motor which is the same motor that you'd have in a Carmagia or in a Bug. So the camper is very similar to Westphalia which a lot of you are probably familiar with. The pop top's more of a European style, more like a 67 split window and down it's smaller which is nice because you can still put a full length roof rack on and carry lumber and use this for utilitarian purposes because it can take the weight on the rain gutters but it also allows you as you'll see to be able to stand up on the inside in the minimal amount of space that you have and there are little velcro windows that kind of pop up and you can tie them i can go over my stove i can do some cooking um these are pretty nice i guess i need a lighter for that the stove works fine though there is a little extra storage underneath the stove for pots and pans, or you can even fit a little um, bucket toilet in there with a, a plastic seat that pops on. The other nice thing about the camper is you've got the sink and you've got the fridge. So over here there's a hand pump, and I don't have any water right now, but you just pump this and you can do your dishes here. Um, there's a little storage space here and you've got your mirror if you wanna kinda put your silverware in here, or kinda get ready for your day. And then down here, this is actually the original Norcold fridge that's, I guess, 47 years old. And it has a little freezer up on top and it works on either 12 volt DC or 110 AC. And so these are really nice to have. A lot of the early VWs just had ice boxes, but this was kind of a special option. Um, looking towards the back, We've got this really nice fold out seat with um, some vintage material. So you can pull these levers forward and then the seat will actually slide down. And up here is the headbanger area. <laughs> Most people keep their dirty clothes up there like I am. Um, and then you've also got like this little armrest area. It's kind of a stealth place to, to store things that you, know, you might want to kind of keep private. And let's put that back in. There is a little ashtray back in the day, you know, the, a lot of cars came with those, which is kind of nice. There's a little lamp right here that I might be able to flip on. There's a little, so that's kind of got a LED so it doesn't get too hot. Um, that's the only light in the back of the camper that it came with from stock. There's one other little light that's right up here. And this one just kind of, you know, is a, is a door kind of light that comes on like your dome light and then um, this is the closet and so this is the pretty much the rest of your storage so there's not a whole lot of storage in these VWs so you really do minimize it down there's a little closet pole hanger up on top and then I do have an inverter down in the bottom here that's fused to a uh, secondary house battery bank that will have a solar panel on top right now it's running through an isolator and it's coming off of the alternator let me go ahead and drop that down um, there is a lot of storage underneath here actually and so most people use this for either spare parts if they're overlanding or they'll keep their tools or something heavy in there. It can also be a huge battery bank area but this is kind of a nice spot. And then there is a little trash can that kind of slides in and out right here. And there's a table as well that you can kind of, you can pull this up and then it just kind of has some legs and it kind of connects in and mounts right here so you can sit and eat your meal with your partner here. Um, it is a walkthrough model which is kind of interesting and not exactly rare but they did make them in the bench model or the walkthrough so you can walk up to the front. These have um, a very simple dash so this one has a special option which is a parcel tray. It also has a gear shift extension which was kind of some aftermarket niceties to get and there's an old Blaupunk radio that actually has a, um, a din in the back to plug in a cell phone and um, I usually have a, a Wi-Fi, I guess it's a Bluetooth module that I 
run off of this USB and so you can just kind of use it wirelessly if you want to which is really nice to get one of these radios if you can find one. Um, the dash has just a speedo, a fuel gauge and some lights, um, just the normal standard steering wheel. This one is actually set up with a lot of extra mods as far as uh, diagnostics for knowing what's going on with your motor. I've traveled quite a bit in this van. Um, this van's actually been to Australia and back. It was my um, my container. I shipped all my goods over there and we drove this around and built a really nice kind of eco property with this van. And then when I got back, I drove this to Taos and back. And then after that trip, I realized I needed a bigger motor. So I put in a 1776 motor with some hydraulic lifters. There was a Mofco, um lifter setup and I drove it to Oregon and back uh, right after I put the motor in after I broke it in it ran great didn't have any issues and um, so I went to the central coast and back last I think it was last summer um, the gauges that I put in to make sure everything was going okay were the voltmeter the temperature gauge for the oil I also have a cylinder head temperature gauge which is really getting down to brass tacks with a VW and then I have oil pressure and I have a tachometer and so that all helps me understand exactly what's going on. There's also a deep sump on the engine so that you have more oil capacity as well as a remote um, external oil cooler. So I don't have a thermostat on it, but I do have a switch and I flip that on if I see my temperature going up. And so that'll cool the engine down really quick if it's ever getting too hot, which it doesn't do. It's a very nice motor and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. There's curtain rods throughout this van. These came from the factory. I do have brand new curtains that'll be going all the way around. They'll be the same as the ones in the back window the standard Westphalia plaid, which is really nice. And they'll also go on these windows too. Still kind of working on that. And then these windows, I'll have these little hand crank um, knobs. And so you can kind of tilt them out and you know, you can kind of get some ventilation if it's raining and such. And so these are kind of nice and they go way out. I generally bring them back in before I drive. If we look back over here at this little cabinetry, I just wanted to mention there's the little sportsmobile badge from when it was made and this is a nice little table that has kind of like a spice rack underneath and so these are really good if you're cooking and you want to do some prep outside you can leave that open and then there's a roof rack on top which is where i'm probably going to mount a thin film solar panel probably 100 or 120 water that'll go on there and then if we come back to the rear hatch i'm going to pop this open it's got jail bars in the back, which was kind of more of a deluxe bus feature, but I just, I like the look and they do protect the windows if you have cargo. And so the whole inside of the van got this uh, really nice epoxy primer on it. So it's all like new as far as, you know, the wheel well for the spare, which is on the front and just all the rest of the, the sheet metal. It's in really good shape. The last storage compartment is right here. There's a sliding door and inside the sliding door, there's a, um, a screen that snaps all the way around the rear hatch so you can get tons of ventilation if you're out somewhere hot in Mexico or whatnot. So that's nice. Um, the back's totally stock except for these. These, This is actually like Porsche or deluxe VW trim. And these just keep, kind of keep your bumpers intact a little bit better. So if you get bumps, it doesn't chip your paint. Um, the engine is the 1776 with dual k drawn, So it's a little bit more horsepower than what they came with, which was a stock 1600 with a a Solex 34 picked, so a little bit uh, more fuel consumption, but it'll get you up those hills, get you over the grapevine with no problem, and it runs cooler as well, so that's kind of nice. Batteries are going to be over here, so that's the engine compartment. Super clean, super dry, no issues with that. It has about 3,500 miles on it right now. And all new rubber everywhere on the van, um, brand new paint. This is the original color, it's called Chianti Red. And what else can I say? Um, that's really about it. It's just a sweet, really rear van. You don't see the sportsmobiles very often. If you're looking for a Volkswagen camper that's a little more rare than maybe a Westphalia, this would be a nice one. And if you like to build things, I definitely recommend the small pop top. I have a roof rack that comes with it that mounts full length and the pop top still goes up. So you can go out and build your little off-grid home with this van if you really wanted to do that. So thanks for watching. I'm Jamie. Um, there are some posts regarding this van on peace, love, and van life, and some also on lanterns and lettuce on Instagram, and you can contact me that way if you're interested. It'll be for sale in about a week, and we're at the start of February 2019. Thanks.